Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob Scribner and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 118, 118 and welcome to the show. And I'm uh, tickled pink to be able to yak with you again. Uh, trying to do a few more episodes. Uh, it's been a little tough because we actually haven't been RVing uh, much, but that's going to be changing real soon. Uh, thrilled to death that we are actually bringing the RV home from Central Oregon next month and uh, starting to, uh, well, we made room because we actually uh, just sold our boat, which <laughs> it was the second most exciting thing in my whole whole life. The first was buying it. The second was selling it. So anyway, um, yeah, just getting older and having a big old boat like that, just a bit much for me and Sherry to handle anymore. We could, but we got so many things going on. And uh, so anyway, so we're going to be bringing the <clears throat> fifth wheel back to Central Oregon and uh, doing some um, local things in the Arizona area. There's some really, there's some gems here uh, that we'd like to go to and haven't been able to because uh, we've been separated, and uh, that's going to change. So that's kind of exciting. But uh, today's show <clears throat> is all oh, kind of the message we've been sending here for the last couple, of, well, at least the last year, of observation. When you're not traveling as much like me and Sherry are, you really have a chance to really view the flavor of some of the channels and some of the uh, YouTube channels of, of RVers um, and the nomads uh, as time goes by. And then sometimes you have time to research it and you look at old stuff and new stuff. And really what I'm seeing is a whole lot of entitlement and a whole lot of arrogance. <laughs> and uh, I was watching RV Odd Couple and at first, when I used to watch their channel, I had mixed them feelings. I wasn't quite sure what they were all about. And uh, um, had a lot of kind of negative stories in a way, but truthful. And, and that, obviously, you know, with our sh <laughs> radio station, we definitely appreciate truthful. But they uh, their last show uh, was... Uh, <laughs> hit the hit the nail <laughs> and uh i i just had to um i don't know kind of a jump onto that bandwagon a little bit so i've been kind of catching some of the shows that the rv odd couple have been doing and uh, i i really appreciate their honesty and uh definitely are great at um uh telling the good and bad of RVing, they have a similar setup as uh, Sherry and I do, as far as uh, having a fifth wheel and truck. And uh, um, they talked about a subject that definitely is one I was concerned about and actually pissed me off too. And uh, this will sound kind of arrogant on our side of things, but please put in perspective is, we traveled for a while, and when we were traveling, our channel grew like a son of a gun. And of course, and we expected it, and we're not disappointed, um, <clears throat> when we stopped traveling and bought a house, we knew that the channel would kind of have to redesign itself. So our original YouTube channel used to be RV Travel Buddy, which we own the trademark to, and we still have. But we felt since we weren't traveling as much, that we better change the name of it to Outdoor Travel Channel because we're doing more road trips and more um, uh, kind of odd things that are outdoorish, uh, like cooking and boating and um, gardening and a few other things. And uh, 
when we hit the road again, we can easily, uh, the, the RV Travel Buddy is still built into that. So is RV Talk Radio. So uh, our channel will explode like it normally does when you have a niche that you're doing and you're staying consistent with a message. We totally get it. Uh, we understand. We don't expect our channel to grow uh, crazy. Now our podcast, RV Talk Radio, has always done very well. And so thank you. We really appreciate that. And probably because we're kind of deep hitting and in your face. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, but um, the uh, RV Odd Couple brought up a subject that I totally, totally agree with. And, and, and for me to describe it will sound a little arrogant on our side, but please understand it. When we first started RV Talk Radio, we were 100% full-time RVing going um, like going like crazy. We actually started before we went full-timing, and we did full-timing in 2006, too, before all this stuff was going on. So uh, when we got on the road and RV Talk Radio was really going nuts, um, one of the biggest phenomenons um, that happened was we were getting contacted a lot from other RV channels to get interviewed. And um, that, that's what we're all about, and we love it. In fact, we're going to try to see if the RV I'd couple would like to do an interview with us. And when we do interview people, we don't try to break them down. We actually want to hear the good, bad, whatever they like to talk about. And, and every time, and if you don't think we've actually interviewed good channels, just look. look. I mean, we've done Freedom Theory. We've done... Uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> the journey couple with the little girl. Um, gosh, I went blank on their name. We did some other ones too. I um, don't remember all their names. Some young couple, some couple, uh, some channels that have gone away too because they bought um, bought a house and too. Anyway, we've done several several interviews, and our attitude is is like we'll do an interview, and I know it'll build their numbers up, which um, like. Uh, uh, the Journey folks, they were a very small channel at the time. And we thought everyone that we've ever done an interview with, uh, their channels exploded after that. Not just because of us. Um, that's Don't get that impression. Um, but the phenomenon is, is once we do an interview and their channels explode and they start getting into much higher numbers than we ever have, um, as far as subscribers and stuff, they ditch you. <laughs> They don't want nothing to do with you because you're just a small channel of uh, you know just a few thousand subscribers, as opposed to as they're growing in the five and ten thousand uh, followers, uh, they won't have anything or even go back and say thank you for helping us get started. It's gone, and so the RV odd couple were were uh, interesting when they made a comment that you know that they tried to and we did too um try to collaborate and work with other channels as they grew and if uh, uh suddenly they don't return their messages suddenly they don't want nothing to do with you and and uh uh of course you know our subjects we kind of hit the hardcore stuff and they're all trying to talk about the fluff and i really attack ebay begging because every one of them except with a handful uh, didn't um, are just constantly selling you stuff or we wrote a book or we have a membership site now where you have exclusive videos which you don't need to get exclusive videos because they're out there anyway you can learn anything you want about RVing without paying for membership video lessons and or they've written a book and they want you to write buy their book or they want you to buy a product on their Amazon stuff. Now I have no problem with all that. In fact, we when we have a product we may talk about, we'll put an Amazon link down below too. Um, and of course this channel here is we're sponsored by the Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags and uh, for your dogs. And that's our product and that helps us um, pay for uh, a lot of things that we do. Um, but a lot of it we just do out of our own pocket because we like to do it. But um, uh, but some of these channels depend, not just as a courtesy or a tip, depend on the funds coming in because they want you to pay for their um, 
gypsyism. <laughs> and um, to me, I find that a little disturbing. I was like, oh, we're going to do videos for you, and we want you to pay our way to unresponsible life living in, in the United States. We want to just freeload all over the uh, United States, live in free camping, and anything we do have to pay for, we want you to pay for it through either our channel or products or memberships. And uh, it's getting, it's if you can clear your head as you're watching some of these shows, the light will come on. And you'll see, oh my gosh, that's exactly what these people are doing. I can guarantee you if I contact any of the channels that we interviewed during their early stages, none of them will either get back with me or even have, uh, you know, like thanks for back in the day you did interviews for us to get us started. We will never, never, ever see that. Um, and if, it, if we do, it will be a miracle and we'll be quite grateful. But the bottom line, throughout the years, we've hardened, you might say, and we realize the realities is uh, once we do an interview and these channels hit their, some, I don't know where it, where it changes, where they get kind of their entitlement and, and stop engagement with little people. Um, but I've seen it over and over and over again. And... Uh, is it long? I'm just still trying to remember that one channel. Long Lost Journey? No, it's something like that. Um, anyway, you guys know the couple with the little girls. They're, they're really nice people. But uh, I can guarantee you right now, they, they never have a time of day with us anymore. Um, just because they're, you know, they've gone big time. And uh, uh, they're actually the only channel I've seen that hasn't gone hog wild and trying to sell e or e-bag. And good for them. The rest of them, <laughs> every other one I think we've uh, interviewed, is uh, they're they're lost, <laughs> they're gone, they're in their own world, um, and uh, yeah. So I I, I want to once again kind of give you guys the reality: this one don't pay for any kind of memberships to get some information about how to get into this lifestyle. Um, it's available. There's so many videos out there. I mean, it was just a few when we first started, but now you, uh, it must be 50,000 videos and just winterizing, uh, let alone solar panels. Uh, geez, will they ever stop on solar panels? <laughs> Jeez. Um, anyway, uh, pretty typical. I think, uh, and then uh, also memberships, a lot of some memberships like the Thousand Trails and stuff make a lot of sense. Um, and then you get these ones. Uh, I cannot believe the obsession with free camping. Uh, like the RVI couple, they're like us. They like a little bit of, uh, they don't want to be primitive. They want to go in the parks that are, one, kind of safe, and two, have the amenities. Um, and uh, they have to work. We did too. And uh, so having the internet around and power and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I, we did some boondocking, and I really hate when you have to kind of like watch every drop of water you use. You, you, you take super short showers. You're being conservative the whole time. And you're, it actually, to me, is not as relaxing because you're kind of stressed out about not overusing your resources. And... Uh, um, yeah, in heating too, like the propane and monitoring that and um, watching your battery power and all of that stuff. To me, it was nice areas we went to, but it still had that stress of, you know, um, do we have to go to town again and uh, our, our house the tanks and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the arrogance the entitlement of some of these guys. Uh, for example, the, the other video I just watched, this is, I just want to shake my head. Nomadic Fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been around forever. Um, and his arrogance is something. That, uh, entitlements uh, really stands out there. I never met anybody that's as, like 
the last video I watched, he was complaining because one of the places he camped in Rife Lake in Washington, I'm from Washington, is now closed to camping. Duh, I wonder why. Get used to it. It's going to happen more and more and more. Why? Because there's too many people out there out there and um, doing the trying to get free camping and the entitled the arrogance the people that don't pick up think they're entitled to be out there leave garbage uh, or break the rules and stay too long um, and then there's another side problem that's um, causing an issue is homelessness and people finding some of these campgrounds and areas uh, national parks where they can try to uh, stay for free and it's um, beyond just the RV situation it's it's actually a, a social issue those are the two culprits um, and then of course uh, some of the governments or some of the different states don't want to pay for the resources to maintain these areas um, garbage wise and road wise and uh, equipment wise and uh, restroom wise and all that stuff um, anyway it's gonna happen more and more you just wait mark my words remember this episode BLM land is gonna diminish um, one way or another uh, because every channel is this free camping here free camping there and uh, and then they're telling people where to go and it's getting those people go to the same places and they use it and use it and use it and abuse it not all of them and what's gonna happen well instead of 14 days now it's gonna be a week seven days then it's gonna be just overnight then some of them will be no overnight at all um, we don't want to pay for it and you guys won't take care of it and some of you guys are abusing it some of you guys are leaving garbage and dumping your sewage and and uh, it's getting to be too much or there's too many people going into an area and then there's social issues and safety and uh, that's just the way it is and you don't believe it <clears throat> just try being my age when I lived in Washington State some of the th privileges we had when it came to hunting and fishing and outdoors totally gone uh, either from abuse uh, things that need to be regulated um, safety security camping overnights uh, going to places like warehouser and stuff like that where we used to go hunting now it's all fenced off and gated and you can't stay and can't go hunting anymore and it just it's all gone and it's sad and you hate it and you are spiteful for it I am still and just like nomadic fanatic having his little temp temper tantrum that his rife lake area was closed for the uh, for camping anymore I'm not surprised. I mean, he was one of the first ones to saying Rife Lake, what a great place, and took all these great videos, and so everybody probably started going there, and uh, and it got used and abused, and it, and the entitlement of people saying we're our veers, we should get what we want, and uh, I mean, just just watch that last video that Nomadic Fanatic just did, and you can just hear it, and like someone kind of cut him off. Well, my age, welcome to our world. It happens all the time, whether you're pulling an RV or not. And you think, and then he has the gall to go up to the guy and say, do you know you cut me off? And, and then he comes walking back, a little arrogance, entitlement, saying he didn't listen or whatever. And it's like, I'm sure the guy got the message from the horn honk. That's all you needed to do. And yet you got this arrogance and entitlement um, attitude of, since I'm out here doing full-time RVing, you need to comply. And it's like, no, everybody needs to be safe, of course. But things happen. And sometimes you do switch lanes too soon and stuff. And, this, and it could be just a fluke of one particular time. And it's like I almost hit a bicyclist the other day. just Because you know how you get up to an intersection, you start looking to the left and to the right. And then you look to the left the most because that's the oncoming cars. And I was getting ready to shoot for it because the car is cleared. Freaking bicycle comes shooting across the intersection because you're not looking to the right that hard. And it's like you, you humans will make mistakes. 
and to be so spiteful over it. Yes, and one is like it shook up and I felt bad. And uh, I mean, I did, certainly didn't need the bicyclist to stop, come back and chew me out. It's like, I kind of chewing myself out. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm thankful nothing happened. At the same time, it's like, okay, a new awareness kind of shook me out of uh, complacency, you might say, or being comfortable all the time. Um, and it's like, all right, and intersections, Rob, take a second look. Uh, even at this age, you know better, but you get kind of lazy sometimes. Things happen, but to get angry at someone or um, to shout out and, and, and think that you're better than the other person, you want to go scold them? S s really? <laughs> Come on, people. Some of these channels is like, like they are the experts. They are the guardians of the universe and it's like oh the rv world and i have news for you you're just like me <laughs> and everybody else <laughs> and you better learn to deal with it hi folks this is ranger rob on the street talking to people who claim ranger rob poopy bags saved their lives i have here billy bob burns yep, from minnesota howdy. how are you how did ranger rob poopy bags help you well i was visiting the park the other day feeding them pigeons and i was playing with my marbles and my bag broke and i had marbles everywhere i lost my marbles and then i remembered i had ranger rob poopy bags in my back pocket gathered up all my marbles saved my marbles and i'm a happy camper well billy bob that was an interesting story thanks for sharing that Folks, when you get a chance, go to Amazon right now and order Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. They're affordable, strong, larger, and deeper than other bags, and smell like lemon. Get some Ranger Rob Poopy Bags today at Amazon. They may just save your life. Well, that just goes to show you, if you don't own a dog, you should still buy Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. <laughs> you never know when they'll come in handy, especially if you lose your marbles. So yeah, anyway, uh, big. I'm very excited to finally get our RV back. Um, and some of you guys kind of like uh, wondering, like, or, how, what, what are you planning, Rob? Well, with our channel right now, we're having fun with it, kind of doing domesticated kind of stories, and uh, the RVing stuff will pick up, and then we'll, you'll start seeing the videos kind of sway back to that. And then eventually what we want to do is when we get into our real retirement days, um, when Sherry can break free, uh, then we'll do kind of a seasonal full timing. And the stories will be just like before, all the great stuff. And, and once again, how to winterize your RV and how to, <laughs> you know, some, but we, we keep, we'll always be trying to put a twist on stuff. And uh, I think the neat part is Sherry and I will be able to compare three circumstances. 2006 when we were full-timing, the 2015 time when we were full-timing, and then you know another half a decade or so getting back out there and seeing what's been changing. And uh, that will be interesting. I'm sure a lot of things we won't like and other things we'll accept. And, of course, you know, just watching what's going on, we know what to expect. And uh, uh, being sure to tell the truth of what's going out there and not have these stories. The reason these channels are pushing this wonderful life of RVing and freedom is because they're pushing their products. You don't believe me. Just look at the descriptions. They'll be... You can kind of tell it's all about their income so you can pay for their freedom of the road. And uh, um, the ones that you've seen disappear, and I'm, I'm having a senior day, I guess. I can't remember uh, the name of some of the channels I've seen fade away because the world responsibilities came along and they go, well, I, we want to be responsible now. And some have bought houses, some have had families, um, some have uh, had careers where they can't travel. And uh, uh, yeah, 
what the heck? <laughs> Life has hit them, and in reality, and I commend them, and they'll probably be back on the road again sometime, and they'll keep their channels uh, uh, going as we're going. Just like Sherry and I would kind of like just kind of keeping the channels going. And now we have, you know, at least the RV Talk Radio is consistent on Outdoor Travel Channel. And then pretty soon you'll see RV Travel Quest, which is me and Sherry by ourselves, um, starting to get revived. And you'll start seeing RV Travel Buddy, which is more oriented towards the big subjects of, RV, uh, of RVing. Uh, but Travel Quest is Sherry and I just personally. And, uh, you know, we have some new technologies and things like that we can't wait to use. And the Lord knows what will be available in the next five years, four years. Oh, could be less than that. Well, about four years, not that far away. And, uh, um, and of course, the other reality with me and Sherry is, is numbers. Now, we're not going out there hoping to e-bag and you guys paying for Sherry and I to be out on the road. When you get older, you have a couple of things. Some people have pensions. I'm fortunate to have that. Some have investments. That's good, too. And then some have, you know, their Social Securities, which Sherry and I will have at between 62 and 64. And then, um, as you can tell, we own a company um, that actually controls a couple of things, not just the Range Rob pet poopy bags, but also uh, radio stations and some other things that we do. All under a corporation we own called Cutting Edge Enterprises, LLC. And so our goal is to create a company in a product and develop it in the next four years that gives us more supplemental income. And, uh, and of course, we'll still have links to Amazon affiliate stuff, and we may sell T-shirts, and we may sell that, but it's really not because the money we want to make to, for you to pay for our lifestyle as it is to have fun with our brand. Um, and, of course, the, the name Ranger Rob we just trademarked, and so we'll have fun with that. And you can buy Ranger Rob, you know, <laughs> cups and funny things about poopy bags. And it's a funny subject. I mean, 30 years ago, somebody said, hey, Rob, you're going to have a, uh, first of all, nobody used poopy bags 30 years ago. Uh, you'll have a company that makes bags to pick up dog waste. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Here we are. So, yeah, and we actually developed, by the way, uh, two new products. We had the Ranger Rob original uh, poopy bags and sheets, and now they're on rolls, and you can get a distributor now. All that stuff is in uh, uh, Amazon, and there'll be some other sources. And then uh, as soon as everything's in place, uh, we're also working on getting our products into some of the retail stores. And so uh, that's our goal, to have our supplemental income so we can RV and, and, and spend some time and still have our home base. So... Uh, uh, big goals we're working and we're working hard and we're certainly not begging <laughs> and we're certainly not doing membership sites and stuff like that um uh and eventually i'd love the company to be big enough that if i ever croak which will happen uh you know it'll be something the kids will want so that will be that'll be a good thing and uh so be it <laughs> anyway um but yeah, the uh, I can't even watch the cheap RVing stuff anymore. It just drives me crazy. It's like it's kind of like watching people that aren't quite homeless trying to draw you into being a homeless person. That's the best description I can give it <laughs> for the Bob Wells stuff. It's, I look at those people and go. Well, there's something to strive to be. I want to live in a van, poop in a bucket, and live out in the desert, and uh, talk um, and have all the freedom in the world. Now, let me switch that. Make sure you understand that I, there is other folks that are really on tight um, uh, budgets, uh, fixed income, and and sometimes that's actually made sense. Um, if you're only getting Social Security or um, disability stuff and you may be under a thousand a month uh to make it you know ends meet sometimes that is a really good lifestyle but to see some guy out there that looks like santa claus uh trying to draw people out to this kind of lifestyle is uh 
downgrading <laughs> us. <laughs> That's all I can say is, um, you know, you guys all like your solar and you all like your technology. You all like, well, you know, who makes that stuff? Educated, well balanced people that have jobs and went to school and learned skills and, and make good money. Uh, if we all started living in vans and being gypsies, uh, our country wouldn't, in technology and stuff like that, would just not cut it. It just can't live like that. If you want to live like that, go find some island in the Carib oh, wow, well, Philippine islands and, uh, and some of these crazy Pacific islands where you can just live off the land and coconuts. Um, but uh, this is the good and plenty land <laughs> and land of good and plenty. And uh, you got to work and get education. And 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 uh, we got to have people like that. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of young people following Bob Wells that are going to become brain surgeons or doctors <laughs> or scientists, <laughs> aerospace experts, electricians, mechanics, welders. I don't know. Maybe a few welders. But, yeah, I, I just... It concerns me that you have a whole channel that's very popular. Let's come out and be free. I mean, let's live off the land and try to find free camping constantly. Just doesn't. I can, it's, every video I see come out, and I'm subscribed. I'm to see if there's a subject I just gotta hear him talk about. Uh, I'm just disgusted. I'm sorry, but he's trying to draw. Look at the pictures. Look at the people that are drawing you and it's like, this is the way to go. Come on out here. Join our group. Look at that. Is that what you want to be? Really? Is, is I mean, all of us want balance in life and happiness and things, but we all have responsibilities. Even as an RVer, you have responsibilities. And it takes money. And if you want to start your own business, it takes money to make money. Trust me, I know that one. But I've always had an education since, uh, uh, and skills since I was a teenager that I could have, I fell back on several times during my lifespan through education and night schools and college. And never, I mean, it was hard but never regretted it because I always was able to provide for my wife and children. Even in times have gone bad, we were able to come out of it because we held on to these skill sets. And living in a van is not going to be the skill sets you need for some of these really nice features and things you see in life that you'd like to have. That's not... I, you know, people, I do, I'm, I'm a realist that some people to a point are at a point that they can't do some of that stuff and it makes sense. But a lot of you guys are trying to draw in perfectly capable people that really need to focus on education and skills in their young age so they can do anything or have the dreams they want to for the future. Some might want to live on a sailboat. Well, you got to have money to get that sailboat. And you could buy it in your 30s and, and finance it and take 15 years to pay for it before you retire. You could do planning. These young people have the opportunity to do anything they want, but they just can't do it right this minute. You could build something special and get it paid for and have it in place at a certain time period with a little bit of planning and you'll have a wonderful life but you take the shortcuts if you take shortcuts you'll pay the consequences <laughs> pay the piper <laughs> whatever the some of those things are <laughs> shortcuts are you might look good at the beginning you may find out they're the worst path anyway Something to consider. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area 
repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and G-B-Y-A-Y. You know, I get to think, and, and, and as I do the show, some of the names are coming back. Like we just uh, we did an interview for uh, uh, Dan and Jen the other day and stuff, and they were coming through Arizona, and, and uh, of course we kind of knew that, so we shot some notes to them saying, hey, you want to meet for coffee? So this, we did an interview for you and stuff. <laughs> no, didn't happen. And no hatred or anything like that. Just we got what we wanted out of you, and uh, uh yeah, you're not worth a cup of coffee anymore. <laughs> it's like every one of them has been like that. And so as we kind of been doing this for the years, the more spiteful I think we're getting is like, but I still, I, I to this day, I still feel obligated to have the opportunity to bring someone on board. And you'll notice any interview we ever do is always positive. And, uh, and and the show is actually positive. We're just kind of like making you think. That's all. If the show was like want 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 want, just the same old winterizing and and best places to buy an RV and, and dealerships and all that stuff. Uh, there's you know obviously there's shows out there doing that. Uh, we just want to give you food for thought and uh, hopefully give you another perspective of when you're watching shows. Um, that maybe something you didn't consider before and uh, realize that these shows are little 10 minute pictures of life and uh, anyway um, it's amazing and I, I get a kick like I'll watch a nomadic fanatic he's showing his dashboard look at what happens <laughs> and I just want to tell him that's what happens when you buy an up-to-date RV <laughs> you actually got little check systems at work and little technologies when you buy a 20 or 25 year old RV it's like no you're not going to have some of those features <laughs> so I just laugh like <laughs> it's the most fascinating thing he's ever seen <laughs> I've never done an RV that did that <laughs> that's because you've been <laughs> driving some old pretty old rigs <laughs> it's okay <laughs> he, he went with what he could afford and that's cool <laughs> anyway but as you get older i use rv even gets newer in a sense if, if it was 20 years ago uh, old and you held it for five years and you buy another one that's 20 years old it's five years newer than the last one <laughs> you might see some new stuff <laughs> so yeah anyway but yeah i uh i've noticed uh a lot of places we go, a lot more rules. Uh, I think it was a couple of our, um, Walmarts in our area quit letting overnight nighters happen because that got out of hand. And then there's a couple of cities that let it get go, like Flagstaff, I believe they're letting anybody stay there longer than just a night because they have a homeless issue and they don't know what, and it was like, we kick them out of there. Well, you don't know where they're going to end up in Flagstaff. So, um, yeah, it's hard. And uh, then there's the new problem of, like over in L.A., people actually having RVs towed <laughs> that don't run to park on the side of the road to live in because they know they're not going to get kicked out. And uh, so the homeless have found... Uh, so, you know, the old RVs that Nomadic Fanatic finally got rid of, a homeless probably bought it and they're living on the side of the road with it. And uh, probably no engine in it. Who knows? But what's wrong with RVing and have the in, uh, uh, the amenities? I mean, really, every show you see is like, like they're against amenities. Um, and... Uh, why can't you have 
a good education and a good job and, and good money where you can stay in nicer RV parks that some of them are just fantastic. Of course, those are the ones guys aren't doing videos because they got better things to do. Go enjoy the RV park and the surroundings and sit around in front of a camera trying to earn enough money to pay for their thousand trails. <laughs> I'm just saying, why does it seem like there's not any channels out there saying we're in a five star RV park and this place, yeah, a little pricey, it can be 50 to $100 a month a day. But look what we're getting and look how nice this place and the security is and everything's clean and, a, you know, three pools and, and uh, movie theaters and all kinds of stuff. And that's what I was talking about in the last show. It's like, hey, you go to, if you're going to Las Vegas in an RV, go stay in a great RV park. Then you have, one is the adult playtime and you got a great place to stay when you're out of money. <laughs> You spend it all in the casino. <laughs> and and that's where I would go to the casino and spend a little money there if you can afford it. I mean, you're big boys and girls. You're adults. Go have some fun. Go see a really expensive $250 a ticket show in Vegas. And go, you know, drop $500 in the casino and, and uh, get free drinks and listen to bands and if you're young, go some of the little dance clubs. <laughs> Wear your big stilettos. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever see when I go to Vegas is you walk through the strip and the young um, young adults and girls are all heading for the dance clubs and the girls are all wearing the cute little dresses and stuff and that's just normal. But they're wearing those stilettos. <laughs> it's like watching them try to walk. I just, I feel sorry for them. And, and at the same time, I admire them. Like, how do you walk in those things without breaking your neck or ankle? Anyway, but um, it's still fun. But they're all dressed up, having fun, and they're young. And, and that's that's cool. Go have some fun. That's a safe place to go when you're not, don't have to drive. And you can be adults and have a good time. And that's what Vegas is all about. If you go to Vegas to think it's a great place to go camping, you got something else coming. <laughs> if you get to a cheap place, you will be in a cheap place and it won't be in a good neighborhood. <sighs> but, you know, what's wrong with, why can't some of these RV shows show amenities and spending a little money? It's okay. Really, what's wrong with paying $50 a night? If you have a career in it and and you're making decent funds, why can't you do that? Why can't they do shows like that? I'd love to see some of the nicer parks. All I see is the same old videos of the same thousand trails and the same boonstocking spots over and over. Same places at Lake Mead. Same places in Washington because it's really getting limited in Washington and Oregon. But there's some really immaculate places. Where's the video for those? Sherry and I did a few. We just weren't out and about enough. But I tell you, when we get back on the road, I guarantee you, that's why I want not just the fixed income of Social Security and pension. I have a company that's making me money. That I can take off for a few months, let the kids run it, and uh, send me a check. And I'll be at a five-star RV report, uh, <laughs> resort having a good time. Because you can and you should. You're worth it to nickel and dime yourself and try to e-bag your uh, lifestyle. This, these shows like Bob Wells and stuff, they're trying to get you out there and like wearing the same pair of blue jeans for a month <laughs> and maybe two pairs of underwear. Come on, people. That's sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> How about buying a really nice RV, staying in really nice places and really enjoying things and paying for tours and helicopter rides and airplane rides and boat tours and stuff. What's wrong with that? Shouldn't you strive for that? If you're young, I'm telling you, do that. You will enjoy RVing. You won't have time to do videos. <laughs> Go make some money 
get yourself a foundation of education and skills and you can have a blast. And by the way, screw the RV stuff. Get a sailboat and travel down the Caribbean and go down and check out all of Brazil and, and, and go have a blast. Learn how to scuba dive. <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> get your education. Get your skills. Then go terrorize the world in a fun way, in a good way. And and be able to see stuff and 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 then uh, and then even if you got halfway to a really good income and all that stuff and maybe go visit Mexico and stuff like that, your money will go twice as far. You'd be like a rich person in some of these other countries. Go have some fun. Heck, even take your RV down to Mexico and all that stuff. Yeah, they say it's scary. It's not all scary. <sighs> I don't. Of course, that's a lot of that's media. Um, uh, you got to go find out for yourself. But to live in a van and poop in a bucket, that is not something to strive for. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you should strive for money. Make money. Now you don't have to be rich. I'm not talking about rich. I love to be rich. Feel free to send me a whole bunch of money and make me rich. Ain't gonna happen. Heck, I can't even get anybody to donate to the channel. <laughs> they don't feel sorry enough for me. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. I really don't. And then when I do get uh, tips or something like that, I feel kind of guilty. <laughs> but I don't, I mean, not that guilty. I'm going, wow, that's kind of nice. I'm actually, nobody appreciates it more than me, and I'm not poor. And I hope you're not poor. I just want you to be comfortable and happy. But have a little more higher expectations for yourself. <laughs> get an R good RV, a good truck. Get dependable income. Maybe wait till you retire, and then you can really let your hair down. Just hope your health is with you. But these young folks, i it's all about views and channels and building things up. And then when the big channels work with each other, it's all about making more views and making more money off their channels. And uh, you can see, I mean, I've seen clearly which ones have done it and which ones are affected. And I've interviewed them, and they won't give us the time of day now. Fact. And uh, we were brilliant to them when they first met us, and now we're stupid to them. Gee, how arrogant, how entitled can you get? I can predict almost every one of them how it's going to turn out for them. Unless they face reality and start connecting with the community again and becoming part of a citizen and learning to have skills and education that can give them the world in a sense and do that travel and things they want. But if they start out young and start being their little gypsies, uh, mark my words, I wish I could listen to this podcast 20 or 30 years later when they're hitting their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They're going, crap, I have no skills, I have nothing. What are they going to be? And they'd reminisce and probably go through life going, what if I would have gotten some skills? So why I'm in my 40s, I could have had a job. Instead of I drove around in a cheap RV for 10 years and now I can't find a place to camp anymore. And <laughs> It's predictable. It's going to happen. But if they do the old-fashioned, at least the 10 or 20 years of getting skills and education, then they got 30, 40, 50 years of having a blast. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. Moving on. So I uh, tortured myself to watch one more show here before I... Uh, finish up this program and I watched Little House on the Road 
uh, I don't know how I, I decided to subscribe to him to watch his stuff. Actually, I like the fact that he knows he's kind of nomadic. He knows it's not the most glam glamorous kind of world. And it's kind of, it's the life that he's chosen because it kind of fits for his circumstance. But his shows are actually very realistic. And uh, most of them are most time, uh, they're kind of on the negative side or more on the be skeptical side. And I appreciate that. Um, he talks a lot about security. Apparently he had a issue with somebody, one of his RVs or something got burnt down or broken into or something negative. I don't know the whole story and I apologize for that. Uh, but I do appreciate the fact that he talks realistic about security and leaving his RV and um, he says people are uh, tell him, well, what are you cooking? Show us what you're cooking for dinner. And he's like, why? It's pretty basic stuff. It's no different than the stuff you eat. Why is it so important to see how I eat? And uh, anyway, I kind of appreciate the, his realism of his lifestyle is not glamorous and it's not ideal and uh, that things are getting harder camping is getting harder boondocking is getting harder and those people that are out there boondocking with them are not exactly trustworthy and uh he said he had a lot of issues in the florida area and uh he's uh, uh security pack does have a weapon uh, i would suggest most people do I uh, just recently uh, just bought a new weapon, and actually Sherry and I took a class, and uh, we actually enjoy the fact of this, the hobby of it too, but we also bought it for our house. We have weapons, but we wanted a hand weapon um, just in case. I mean, it was like we never we never had a hand weapon here, and, uh, and since we decided to get one, we took a class, which was a lot of fun, by the way, just had a blast and now we just like to go to the range and go sh plug a few uh targets kind of fun at the same time it's a peace of mind knowing that um you know all it would take is uh the grid going down for a couple of weeks i'm not saying permanent or apocalyptic or anything like that and people will get insane and uh, you'd be darn glad we had a <laughs> second amendment um, but yeah, um, he doesn't paint the, the pretty picture and I, I, I do respect him for that. And he does talk about the nice things and the, the good parts of it. But, uh, some people's lives just turned out that way and it works for them based on their circumstances. And that's where some of these younger people that are boondocking, living in vans or living in campers. Uh, really makes sense because housing is getting expensive and that's what's caused a lot of our homelessness is we've priced our apartments and low-income houses to a point that some of these people just can't afford it when they only have 500 a month fixed income or or $900 a month fixed income. They can't get an apartment. Those are the exceptions to the rule. So, uh, yeah, if you guys get a chance to see that guy's videos, um, pretty realistic. Um, uh, I, th I think it'll give you some ideas of cautionary things to look out for, and that's good. Uh, if you have the income and ha can make the money, go to the nicer places, the four or five star resorts. Then you won't have a worry in the world other than uh, making sure you're following the rules because they get a little more stricter in some of those fancy places. But they have to be that way so they stay consistent. So if you go one year and go next year, it's the same. Anyway, uh, if you keep going to some of these, if you think RVing is always what the Thousand Trails looks like, think again. There's some really nice, we even got some great mega resorts down here in Arizona. And uh, you could spend your whole time in some of these mega resorts and never leave to do anything other than maybe go get groceries. <laughs> They're just that nice. And they've got so many things going on every day. They're like little cities. 
And that, that can be a lot of fun. And even though you may pay a little more per month to stay in a place like that, you probably spend a little less um, uh, trying to get away from your RV. And that's one thing Sherry and I found that since we bought a house is uh, we're actually not taking off as much and doing road trips. And we love those. But the reason was we found ourselves that we wanted to get away from the RV and get a break and get out of that little unit and get some elbow room when we go on road trips. When you own a house, you don't feel that way. And so we're not doing as many road trips. We love road trips. No, they're not a good road trip. But anyway, I hope this show uh, kind of shows you once again uh, that uh, some other channels are discovering that other channels can be arrogant and a little entitled. And uh, they're what you you know you may have followed them for a long time and and then you may get your own channel you'll find that they will not give you the time of day and uh here if you're a new channel and you'd like to be interviewed we'll do something real positive for you send you on your way i can only cross my fingers that someday that you would not get arrogant and entitled and go on your way and actually say hello to us once in a while in the future so I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. I want to thank you very much for listening. Uh, we'll be back on the road in no time. Until then, we'll kind of watch and observe and, and uh, try to help other channels out. So have a great day, everyone. Take care now. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.